Good morning and welcome to Sim World Today here on a Monday, October 8th. Uh, we are quickly approaching the Halloween day itself. Just got done Halloween weekend. I am Marsh, joined by Rick Blaze. Good morning, Rick. How are you? Ain't no trick or treats here, baby. Oh, man. Rick Blaze here. Monday morning. Mm. Glad to be here, Marsh. Let's get to it. Oh, man. Well, there was uh, plenty to get to. Uh, across uh, a packed football Sunday. Uh, we're only going to get time for three of them, but my goodness, was there plenty that could have got to. Let's go to the Lions and the Titans. And a matchup with the Titans really shouldn't stand out. It's something to talk about. But a 52-burger sure as heck is something to talk about. The Lions were fantastic on Sunday. They moved to 6-1 and one on the season, take sole possession of first place in that division. Great game. They didn't really need to do much. Their Detroit passing had just 85 yards from Jared Goff, uh, 184 on the ground. Their defense uh, was fantastic, and that's really what put this thing away. Your takeaway from this one, Rick. Newsflash, ladies and gentlemen. The Titans are trash. They are pure, unadulterated dumpster juice. There's no reason. I mean... The Lions did whatever they wanted to do, however they wanted to do, to have a professional team score 52 points while throwing for less than 100 yards is unheard of. Uh, Khalif Raymond uh, looked like the second comment of uh, uh, Desmond Howard out there. He was just doing whatever. He looked like Michigan's Desmond Howard. It looked like a college football game that... Yesterday looked like a college football game, a D1 team versus a D2 team, and I kid you not, they scored on special teams. They scored on defense. They ran the ball down their throat. Even the running back is throwing touchdown passes. They were just doing whatever. I think I saw the, the, water, boy call, the water boy calling plays on the sideline for the Lions. It didn't matter. Whatever they did, whatever they called, whatever they said, worked. Mason Rudolph shouldn't have gotten on the plane. The offensive coordinator shouldn't have gotten on the plane. The defensive coordinator shouldn't have gotten on the plane. But you know what? I said all that to say this. As a Houston, Texas fan, I'm so happy to see it. I am glad to see it. I am glad to see it. I'm glad well, to see Lions, it. The Lions made their claim to being the best team in, in football. And I know that the the Chiefs remain unbeaten. They did it again with a little bit of help from their defensive friends because their offense continues to not look great. Um, but the Lions did it in so many different ways that shows the depth of this team, even without Aiden Hutchinson, which a couple weeks ago when he left with the injury, it was interesting that the report afterwards was that they believe he could come back if they played in the Super Bowl which tells you exactly the level of confidence that exists within this football team because they dominated their way. And if you've ever been a Jared Goff non-believer, and again, this is against the Titans, not a good football team, but if you've ever been a Jared Goff non-believer to say you can't win a Super Bowl with Jared Goff, well, they just scored 52 points essentially without Jared Goff, who went 12 of 15 for 85 yards because Jameer Gibbs looked like a rocket ship taken off on his long touchdown run of 70 yards he hit that hole with so much speed and came out of it that's exactly why people have been just salivating over his potential for the last two years their defense was fantastic even without Aiden Hutchinson again all of this coming on the caveat of it's against the Tennessee Titans but their defense was suffocating their secondary or their second uh, special team excuse me to you mention uh, Raymond has that uh, punt return touchdown. They also have Dorsey take one, the only kickoff that he returned, 72 yards to set up a short field. That's what this team is doing, is that they beat you in every single facet. At this point of the season, coming through week seven, where we're just about at the midway point, it's challenging for me to find a team that's better than the Detroit Lions at 6-1 and one and 3-1 and one overall, the way that they have played, and they're on their well on their way to locking up home field advantage if they can keep this rolling throughout the NFC playoffs. Uh, let's go to a team that shockingly disappointed, though. At this point, maybe it shouldn't be a shock at all. The New York Jets in a divisional rivalry against Juggernaut, led by 
Derek or Drake May before he leaves with a concussion and it's Jacoby Brissett. The New England Patriots beat the New York Jets 25-22 in another goose egg of a game by the Jets in this what should have been prolific offense, but it's nothing of the sort, Rick. Well, listen, the Jets have dug themselves in a hole that I don't think anybody can get them out of at this point. They're in pure desperation mode. They came in uh, against New England today, a very winnable game against New England, and they just couldn't get it done. Um, Brissett, who had been struggling, which is the reason why Drake May took over at quarterback, came in and lit the Jets' ass up. I mean, like, <laughs> the, the Jets, who are known for their defense, couldn't get a stop when they needed to stop most. Aaron Rodgers is looking okay. His tools are just looking all right. His offensive line seals trash. Like, it's, it's just like a, it's everything's starting to snow plow against the Jets. Um, and they're in bad shape. And I don't know how much longer you go with Aaron Rodgers. I mean, assuming he finishes this season healthy, do you sign up for that next year? When do, when do you, as the, as the Jets franchise, say, you know what? I need to prepare for the future or moving forward uh, because... Aaron Rodgers needed to turn it to Jesus Christ to get this Jets team uh, to win a division or make the playoffs. They're a sunken ship right now. The Jet has landed. Uh, this is not a team that has a big hole to climb out of. Uh, this is not a team that has work to do. This is a team that's done, Rick. This team, the Jets, are done. I mean, there's no coming back from this. They're done. Let me ask you this. They're Yes. Let me ask you, to just like they like to spell their thing, another four-letter word does them right. All I need from you is a yes or no answer to this question. Okay, I'm just going to ask you a bunch of questions. I just okay. need yes or no. Are the All Miami right. Dolphins done? No. The, you're wrong. Are the Cleveland Browns done? <laughs> are the Cleveland Browns done? At two and six, are the Cleveland Browns done? Uh, Record-wise, yes. All right. Are the Las Vegas Raiders done? Yes, they're done. Are the Jacksonville Jaguars done? Oh, for sure. They're know, well I done. I already know your answer on that. <laughs> Are the New well England done. Patriots also done? Yeah, they're done. So, despite you believe in the 2-5 and five Dolphins somehow have a chance to get back into this, every other team on that list is higher in the standings and has the same record as the New York Jets, yet we are supposed to believe that the Jets are going to make the playoffs because what? Aaron Rodgers was good four years ago. This team is absolutely terrible. They have been inefficient. Their two wins come over the Tennessee Titans, who we just talked about, and the New England Patriots on Thursday Night Football, who they couldn't even sweep in a season series. They've played good football teams and gotten smoked by all of them. They couldn't score a touchdown against the Denver Broncos. This team is nothing of what we've expected, and their upcoming schedule is Houston, Arizona, Indianapolis before they head on a bye. It's Houston, your Texans, on a short week on Thursday. I don't know how you expect the Jets to walk in to, uh, to MetLife on that one and come up with a win against a Texans team that has a case to be maybe the best team in the AFC, if not very close to it. This team is atrocious, and to your question, the bigger point is that I don't know what you do beyond this, because this team is gone all in for a 44-year-old quarterback, only yep. for him to throw for 233 yards in a game against the worst team, I know not record-wise, but you'd make the argument for it otherwise, in the New England Patriots. This team is terrible. They have offensive weapons out the wazoo. I don't know what this team believes they need to do to turn it around, but it's not whatever this is currently. And it could be a coaching change even beyond their interim head coach. Certainly the current way that they've looked at this team does not make me feel like that's going to be an interim head coach that earns the full-time title. But it wasn't Robert Sala's fault that Aaron Rodgers goes 17 for 28 and 233 yards against the New England Patriots. It wasn't Robert Sala's fault that this defense can't get a stop and somehow Jacoby Brissett doesn't look all that bad, though. He didn't look that great either. This team needs a complete overhaul. They're probably going to end up keeping Aaron Rodgers because that's what we see teams do. They get a quarterback and they keep him. But that probably isn't the move that they need to be making at this point in time. Right. No, the the Jets may be all in, but the rest of the league and the fans should be all out because there's nothing about this current Jets squad that I would want to run back next season. I don't want to. I wouldn't want to run any of that back. But 
that goes to the New York media hype. They're going to hype the, the, the city up, hype the team up. And in this case, this is the biggest fraud, fraudulent team walking playing earth right now. And to, to just put a bow on this, when we talk about the Lions who scored 52 points with no quarterback play, again, not Gary Gossel, but because of great special teams, the New York Jets got the exact opposite. Greg Zorline missed an extra point. That's one point. Missed a field goal. That's four points. They lost by three. Uh, that's yeah. the difference between the good football teams and the bad. All right, let's close this thing out with uh, what I think is probably also a bad football team as the San Francisco 49ers beat the Dallas Cowboys on Sunday Night Football 30-24 to in a game that did not feel that close in the second half. 21 third quarter points by the San Francisco 49ers as they run away. Uh, it, again, it looks like a one possession game, Rick. In the fourth quarter, this was not. San Francisco gets a big win to get back to 500. Yeah, this is what this look. The Cowboys had a really, really good chance to get off the schneid with the very beat up, banged up, and hurt San Francisco team. Who I don't know how many wide receivers they have left on the team. The, at, at some point, they're gonna put the water boy in at wide receiver because they're just running out of options. Yet and still, the Dallas Cowboys are the Dallas Cowboys. This is what happens when you Jerry Jones, the owner. But I'm going to get to that point in a minute. But this is what happens when you sit on your hands all offseason. Make no moves of change. You run it back as if your team was already good. I think they should fire the GM. The problem is the damn GM happens to be the goddamn owner. That's the problem. The, the Dallas Cowboys would not be good again until they fire their GM, and that's not going to happen. So good luck, Cowboy fans. You get no whining, winning, or uh, tears from me. Wipe your eyes. Take your L's. You are trash. This was a bad one. I've not been uh, very high on the 49ers, especially now with all these injuries that they've uh, accumulated across this roster. Um, but the Cowboys are not a team that's ready to be a, a serious contender in the NFC. They are currently 13th in the conference. Um, in a conference that's actually really middle heavy in ways that the AFC is not. But this team just doesn't they don't look like a difference maker. That's the the biggest thing. When you watch them, it's constantly playing to their opponent's level. Uh, it's constantly getting beat in the secondary. It's not being able to string together consecutive, efficient uh, possessions and drives. Um, you look at their track record from the season, and none of this has pointed to a team that should be good. They opened it up with a win at Cleveland. We thought that was good. Well, it turns out the Browns are terrible. They get smoked by New Orleans, who, without Derek Carr, are really bad. They lose by three to Baltimore in a game that Baltimore kind of let them hang around in. And then they've beaten the New York Giants and the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Steelers, who we know, are really only good because of their defense. And they still almost lost that one. Their last two showings have been absolute non-appearances by anybody. They haven't looked ready to play this thing. They should have been able to run out against San Francisco and try to get a larger lead than 10-6 at the half, and they couldn't. They get blasted by Detroit, who went up, uh, put up 47 points on them. This is a roster full of talent, just like the New York Jets. C.D. Lamb, very good. Running back, maybe not so much. Hey, maybe this whole we can go budget billing on our running back situation that the SWFL GMs thought they could do last season isn't the best idea because guess who's still not good is Ezekiel Elliott. And Dak Prescott, while he's not great, is not terrible. But you've got a head coach that is a retread of Jason Garrett that is not doing any type of things that are good for the Cowboys. And so just like the Jets, while the Cowboys have a better chance for it at 3-4 and four, record-wise, I think that the New York or the Dallas Cowboys are also out of the playoffs. I do not see a way in which they look or play better than the Los Angeles Rams, who are better than them, or higher than them in the record in the standings-wise. Better than the Seattle Seahawks, who didn't look great that last night against Buffalo. They're clearly not better than San Francisco. I still like Tampa Bay better than them. Really, the only team above them in the standings that you can feel somewhat confident saying that the Cowboys are better than are the Chicago Bears. And the uh, Chicago Bears probably aren't really going to be doing that much anyway for the rest of this regular season. This team is in danger mode. They are a bad team masquerading as a good team because they have three wins on the season. I wouldn't be surprised if this team ends up with six wins to round out the rest of the year. Yeah, I, again, they should fire their GM. That's step one. 
Which uh, has been the, what they've been trying to... <laughs> people have been saying they should be doing since 2001 or whenever he bought the team. And it's not going to happen, unfortunately, because he just wants to have all the power. And that's fine, but it's just not going... It's going to come at the expense of winning for your franchise. Uh, so, I... You know, that's just the way Jerry plays ball. And if you're a Dallas Cowboy fan, you have to live and die by that. He did a great job of making your team a popular team. Uh, and he's done that way well ago, 80s and 90s or whatnot. But at this point, this is uh, what you have to look forward to. Just a bunch of smoky mirrors, a bunch of entertainment, a bunch of uh, animals at the zoo-like atmosphere for the Cowboys. But no wins, all losses. The cowgirls or not, what's up? And I think at this point, you know how bad the cowboys are? I'm going to tell you how bad this is. The cowboys are so bad that their fans are no longer being as delusional as they once were. The fans are not even, they're not, they, they don't even have enough ammunition to even act like the Cowboys are America's best team anymore. They don't even say it anymore. That's how bad it's gotten in Dallas that the fan, the delusional fans are losing their delusionalness because the team is just that bad. And I don't know if delusionalness is a word, but it is today on Still World TV. Uh, they have somehow come to their senses amidst all the, the chaos that has surrounded this team and the terribleness of it. You are you are absolutely correct. All right, that is our show. We're coming back tomorrow. Uh, we'll recap uh, some Monday Night Football, a little bit of some Simworld U slate of games on local broadcasts. Uh, big one tonight, Kansas, number 18, Kansas at number 11, Georgia Tech. Surprising to see Georgia Tech sitting in the top 15, but they've played like it. And also in action is number 12, Iowa, as they host Kansas State. Uh, we return to the broadcast schedule on Tuesday. South Carolina and Virginia on CBS followed by our game of the week, Miami and Mississippi State. Number mm. eight, Miami against the surprise sip. and a prize, Mississippi State, number 15, also on CBS. And that is a whole bunch of top 25 matchups going on Tuesday in that 830 window. Butler in Tennessee and Duke and Memphis also going at Marsh. it. Marsh, right, does, Miami, does, Miami take, does Miami get the dub against Mississippi they State? They haven't proven the track record. I think this is a big test for Mississippi State. They've been some good basketball teams, but I think this mm -hmm. is their... Now that we actually have a bit of a track record around the teams that they've beaten, I think this is by far their toughest test. Um, but I'll, I'll take Mississippi State at home in that one. Uh, You're the taking the sip. Okay. Let's do it. Let's sip on that yak and see what happens. <laughs> All right. That's our show. We're coming back tomorrow. Appreciate you for tuning in, Rick. As always, good to see you. We'll talk again on Friday here on Simworld TV. The only place you can see the game, be the game.